Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Finally, March 23 feature drop for Pixel devices is here after being late for a week. But if you own a Pixel 6, 6 Pro or 6a, you might need to wait even longer because the OTA update is not yet available. So I might need to create a follow-up video about those three models specifically. But for now, I'm going to show you each and every new change on the Pixel 7 Pro. So let's find out what's new. First things first, let's start with the build number here on the 7 Pro. It's TQ2A.230305.008. So let's find out what's new. The first feature we should see in this feature drop is the faster night sight for the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro models. And here's the blog post of Google website. The keyword says here night sight can now capture low light photos faster on your Pixel 6 and 6 Pro models. So because the update is not yet available on both of them, so I'm not going to be able to show you this on camera. But if you are not familiar with this feature, as you see here on the 7 Pro, you can take faster night sight photos because you have the default timing which is shorter than the maximum time that we used to get on older models. So we should expect this feature on the 6 Pro and 6 and I will create a follow up video showing this on the other two devices. The second new change is the availability of magic eraser on all pixel models for free. And as an example here I have the Pixel 4 XL and you will see here I have the feature available. And if you have any other model, even the Pixel 1, you should be able to see the feature. Feature number three is the faster direct my call feature. If you have a Pixel 4a and later, now the phone will show the menus when you call businesses or toll free numbers before they are even spoken by the machine. So you can get to the destination you want faster. And here it says it works only in US. So I will not be able to show you this on my Pixel 7 Pro. Feature number four is the ability to see the active timers on your Nest displays and the speakers right on your at a glance widget on any Pixel phone that has March 23 feature drop and signed in with the same Google account. And as an example, I did set a timer on my uh, Nest Mini and it says here the speaker name and the countdown is live. So I can track it from here. Uh, and also when you open the blog post and the tap on this small number, says here available only in English requires compatible smart speaker or display and it's not compatible with Google Home Max. And if you want to activate the feature in your at a glance widget just tap and hold on it then customize then the settings icon then see more features scroll all the way down and you will see cross device timer as a toggle here available so you can turn it on or off. And lastly when you tap on the timer from your home screen it will not give you the option to control it but all you can do here is to tap and hold and it will give you the option to dismiss it. But once the time is up, you will get a notification here in your notification shade that will allow you to stop the timer or add an extra minute if you want. So let me wait for those five seconds to show you how it looks. So now the time's up and you can hear it in the background. And as you see, I can add one minute or stop it. So I can stop it from here. Change number five is the Health Connect is now a built-in feature under your phone settings. So you need to go to Privacy and then scroll down a little bit and you will see Health Connect. So from here you can manage everything without the need to install a standalone app. Change number six is the Pixel Watch Fall Detection. And as per the blog post, it's rolling out starting today and I don't have it yet on my Pixel Watch to show you this on camera. But to sum up things, the watch will automatically detect any hard fall and if you are unresponsive for about 30 seconds, it will show this notification on the screen. So you need to respond to it within a minute. If you didn't do anything, it will automatically call the emergency services and share your location with them. And you can also speak to the emergency services yourself if that's possible. Uh, and you can see here some notes saying that the feature is not available in all countries and it depends on certain factors. And if you are using the Bluetooth only version of your Pixel Watch, it will require the phone to be nearby. And here it says you need to grant location permission for the feature to share your location with the emergency services. Google also says that they trained the feature to differentiate between a hard fall and a small trip. And they tested it on high energy activities that involved impact, sudden drop or excessive arm movements. So you don't need to worry about uh, triggering the feature when, when you don't need to. I will leave the link for this blog post in the description below if you want to know more. Google also shared a couple of new Pixel Watch features that we should expect in the coming weeks like the ability to set a mono audio and more 
uh, color correction and the grayscale modes that will better optimize the display for a wider range of vision preferences. And finally, you will find the section called more helpful feature for more pixel devices. The first one is the ultra wide band digital car key will now work without the need to take the phone out of your pocket. And when you tap on the note, it says here it works with the 2022 plus BMW models on the Pixel 6 Pro and 7 Pro models. And you need to make sure that your car's software is up to date. On top of this, Fast Pair is now available on select Chromebooks, so you can automatically detect and pair your Pixel Buds or Fast Pair enabled Bluetooth headphones. There are new emoji combinations in the Emoji Kitchen, and they show here some examples. I tried those examples and took screenshots. This is the first one, this is the second, and here's the third. Also, the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro models now support dual eSIMs and when you tap on the notes, it says only available on select carriers or networks, not available on all devices. And lastly, the hold for me feature is now available in Japan. So these are all the new features Google talked about in the blog post, but there are a lot more to show you. So let's start a side by side comparison with the previous version. So on the left, I have the Feb 23 update and on the right, I have March 23 update. And you can clearly see the difference in the almost on display. First, the at a glance and the time is now shifted towards the bottom when compared to the previous version. Also, the fingerprint icon is now smaller, either on the always on display or the lock screen. The third difference is the bigger emergency button when you swipe up to get the passcode keypad. And lastly, the now playing info is now shifted towards the top. Now let's talk about the home screen and the first change is in the app folders. As you see, the folder is now much bigger with more spaces between the icons. The font used is bigger as well. And lastly, the whole folder is shifted towards the bottom to cover some of the folder name text. And also the home screen has different sizes. So for example, those two widgets are on the same size, but you will see in the newer version, it looks smaller and you will see the same thing in all other widgets with more spaces between the widgets that use the same exact size. And when you access the widgets from the app shortcuts, you will see a smaller card because it can show now up to two widgets on the same line. And when you access the widget speaker, you will see the same thing. It will show you two widgets in the suggestions section. And for some reason, the battery percentage of the connected Bluetooth devices is no longer showing in the newer version, even though it works just fine in Feb 23 update. Moving to the system wide search and you will see two differences here. When I start scrolling, it will change the search bar to match the Google widget on the home screen with the same two buttons, lens and the microphone. And also when I scroll back up, it will automatically show the keyboard without the need to tap on the search bar again. Next, the notification sheet. And it got a good number of tweaks. On the first swipe, you will see some differences. First, the battery percentage will disappear and it will show you the estimated time instead. And secondly, the date and time are now using a smaller font. And after the second swipe, things will become more interesting. Now the time is much bigger and also the date will show underneath it in a sort of the other way around. The network name now has a separate line and all the status bar icons are now showing in its own line as well. Same thing happens here in the battery percentage. You will only see the estimated time instead of the battery percentage. And the only place where you will see it is in your home screen. You will also notice that the brightness slider and all the tiles are now shifted down with less space at the bottom. And the brightness slider icon is now mirrored. And when it comes to the smart home devices, you will see the Google Home app icon now showing in the page. And if you are playing music and then tap on the media output switcher, now you can see all your smart home devices located over here so you can quickly connect to them. And as you see from here, I can control the volume of the speakers right away. And if you want to connect to another device, you need to first switch back to the phone and then open the list again to change the device. Now let's talk about the differences under settings. And when I go to the Wi-Fi settings page to share the network QR code, you will notice here two different behaviors. In the older version, I can take a screenshot from the QR code normally, but when I try to do this on the newer version, it says disabled by your admin. And when you try to use the buttons, you will get a black screenshot. Under display, you will see some differences too. First, the brightness slider is smaller and it has the same new icon I showed you in the notification sheet. The screensaver menu item will now show you if the feature on or off before going inside 
the page and when you go inside and then tap on when to start you will see two options only instead of three and if you are using a pixel 6 pro you should be able to see the same screen resolution item we have on the 7 pro but i'm not sure about this because the update is not yet available and when you try to add a new fingerprint the animation color is now different with a smaller icon for the fingerprint as well now let me show you some random tweaks here and there and the first one is in the volume slider as you see it's now shorter than the older version and this is how it looks when you expand the options the biometrics authentication card now has a different icon for the fingerprint with a more shaded color and lastly if you have a pixel 7 pro you will notice a louder and better quality audio coming out of the speaker so that's pretty much it for today those are all the new changes i wanted to show you in march 23 feature drop for pixel devices please let me know in the comments if i missed anything but for now thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video